writing your financial story for your business, cash flow, your financial plan, if you prefer those terms instead, is an absolute must if you wish to give some substance to your future, if you wish to lessen the anxiety, if you wish to have greater clarity and insight at how your business story will unfold, then it's an absolute must. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the why you should write your financial story, how to do that, and share some tips and tricks with you along the way. Hi folks, welcome to another episode on I Hate Numbers, the channel that's there with a primary mission of improving your money mindset, increasing your financial awareness, helping you and your business make more money, save tax and time. Let's crack on with the video. Now, writing your financial story is as it implies, and let's talk about the whys for it. Many business owners, the thousands of business owners I've helped over the years here, will sit down and have that conversation and say, I'm not quite sure what the future looks like. You know, I might want to be doing this. I might want to take on more staff. I'm feeling overwhelmed in my business. I'm not sure if I can afford that. And all those questions that come to the fore, you cannot answer until you get some figures to, to back it up and see how that slots in their financial future. Once you've got that insight, once you've got that clarity, once you've got that financial story written out for your business, once you've got an idea of what that looks like financially, how it affects your bank balance here, then you will find your anxiety will be much less. You have a greater clarity in terms of making those decisions. Those what if, those can I do, those is it possible becomes much easier to answer once you've got your financial story written out. Also, folks, what you've also got to take into account is what that will do for you. It will give you a greater relaxation, a greater thing of saying, actually, what we're talking about is not fool's gold. It has an idea of translating to something that can take us forward. How do we go about it? The first thing you need to consider is you do not concern yourself with any numbers. You've got to sit down and you've got to think effectively about three key things. Number one, where does your money come from? And when I say where does it come from, obviously it comes from clients or it comes from funders or it comes from grants. But where does the money for your business actually come from? And to more specifically, what are those income sources? Think about your revenue sources, your money coming in in terms of buckets. So if you imagine all the money that flows through your bank account, arrange some visual buckets and each bucket represents a category, a group, a type of revenue. If you're a consultant, if you're running a service business, then your money will come in perhaps from one-to-one. -one. It could come from memberships. If you are a car mechanic, if you run a garage, then your revenue, your groups will come in from repairs and maintenance. It will come from selling the cars perhaps. And it'll also come from general servicing that packages that you might offer. If I think about my own business, my money comes from a variety of sources, but if I group them, it will come from tax planning. It will come from financial planning, as we're doing here. It will come from consultancy. It will come from compliance work, i.e. preparation of VAT, year-end accounts, tax returns. And that's the groups and sources of my revenue. What are they for your business? Think carefully what they are. And remember, we don't need to quantify anything yet. We're just purely describing it. And by describing those, we're thinking about what those are going to look like as we get to our end destination. So what they are now and what we want them to be there as well. We then think about resources. What are the resources we need to invest in now? What are our current ongoing costs? What are they likely to look like currently? What are they gonna look like to help us get to that end destination, our goal? What we need to consider then are things like the costs that we have in relation to delivering those services. So if I thought in terms of my own business, delivering those services to clients, then I need a staff team around me. And my staff team would be associated with delivering that work, getting that work completed. If we think about our car example earlier on, well, the garage, the mechanic, would have to buy in spare parts, and those would be relevant to the services they carry out. They'd have to buy in vehicles if they're gonna be selling those on. If you're a consultant, you may have freelancers that you employ, that you bring on to help you deliver those courses that you're offering when it comes to one-to-one, -one, depending on where it's taking place. You may have really related software costs. You may have in-person venue hire as well. 
So all of these examples, there may be, there will be costs associated with delivering that service. We then factor in the support resources, overheads you might call them, that's the conventional term. I'm not a big fan of overheads as a term because it implies to me something quite negative, something that feels it's not necessary. Every business, whether it's an acorn sized business or a mighty oak tree sized business, needs resources for it to continue. It needs capacity, it needs infrastructure. A, a hospital cannot deliver medical services to its patients unless it has people involved in ancillary, in cleaning, pathology, x-ray, uh, checking patient records, admin reception, and the like. If you've got a market trader, you cannot run your business unless you've got supporting resources like perhaps the van that delivers produce, picks up produce, the rent of the market stall, perhaps somebody in the background doing your books, your accounts, admin, marketing, and the like. Every single business, whatever the shape, whatever the size, private, not-for-profit, charity or otherwise, will have costs associated with delivery and the support costs as well. And all we're doing at this moment in time, folks, is articulating and describing what they are. And remember, this is to get to our end destination in, say, 12 months, two years or three years' time. Just describe them in narrative terms. The last part of the exercise then is to actually overlay that and put some figures next to them. So we have an idea, historically what our record is telling us is that for money coming in to our business, if we look at our revenue group one, how many of them for the year are we anticipating, are we looking to sell in? And this is based on our capacity, our ambition, what history says, all these variabilities here. And remember your financial story is not a static, you know, but it's based on action that you will be taking and what's going on in your business. What's your appetite? What's your attitude? What's your way of taking your business forward? What does that look like typically for 12 months worth of membership, for example, for 12 months worth of consulting work? What does it look like for the garage, the mechanic here? How many services will they carry out over a year? How many cars are they likely to sell? Now, I'm not saying that's an easy question to answer. Look at your records. If you're a brand new startup, then you need to take some form of educated guess to begin with. At this moment in time, do not limit the story. Do not think, oh, I can't afford this, I don't know. Even if you just come up with arbitrary numbers, it's a good start point. Likewise, the resources, what are the resources needed? And typically, what we want to do is be able to quantify and identify those now, before we overlay the finances for it, the numbers, let's think about what we've got so far. We've summarized the, where the money comes from, we've thought about the different groups that we have, and we've thought about the supporting costs and the direct costs, as it will be called, for those resources. Some of the terms I'm sharing with you folks, by the way, if you check the show notes, I'll give you some links on previous videos that we've published and old blog posts and the like. Now, when we're thinking about the revenue sources, break it down in terms of how many of those are you anticipating, are you ambitious? Are you looking to sell in for the next 12 months? What price are you going to be charging on average? So it may be if you're that consulting company, you may be thinking I'm going to be doing 50 one-to-ones based on how much time I've got, the capacity I'm willing to invest in, and what I've done historically, and 50 for the year sounds okay. And remember at this stage, it doesn't matter if it's too ambitious, too understated, we, we will always edit at the end. And it's really critical, folks, that you produce this story without any editing to begin with on the first draft. What's the average price that you're going to charge your client for those one-to-ones, for those membership packages? In my own firm, I'd be thinking about how many clients are going to be, based on what I've got, I've helped over the last 30 odd years, in terms of number of clients who want these particular type of services, what's the fees that I'm going to be charging them? Likewise, to for your costs, if they're direct, how many days of a freelancer is being bought in, and what's the average price for that freelancer's cost. If you can assemble all of those, that is a fantastic first step. What One thing to mention here, I said there were three, so we talked about money coming in, it's about money going out, and we've also got to factor into this plan our wish list. What is it we wish for? What's our aspirations, our desirability in business terms? It could be investing in new equipment, new infrastructure, could be some uh, research and development that we need to carry out. It could be having additional personnel coming in to lift the load off our shoulders. Also factor in personal, uh, personal goals. So what's your personal wish list? It could be some self-development that you need to undertake, some training, some uh, CPD. It could be that you wish to take more time away from the business. You know, if you're working frenetically, you might wish to take a month off. 
You, know, you may wish to increase the level of money that you take out of the business to fund your own personal lifestyle, but whatever it is, you must put that in your first cut of your business story. I hope you found this useful. We are gonna look in a future. That's your first step to financial planning. Identify where the money comes from by group, how many and how much. Look at the same for the resources, factor in your wish list here, and then it's about number trawling to actually translate that. I hope you found that useful. If you have, I'd love it if you could share with those who will benefit from that. Until next week, folks, take care.